How are you, Thomas? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, good, thank you. The sun is shining. That always adds a buzz to the day, doesn't it? Precisely. It does indeed. It does indeed. Absolutely. Good. Good stuff. So um, if anyone wants to share, oh, we do have Carol. It's important to me to take good care of myself as I work with people affected by trauma. Thank you so much for sharing that, Carol. That's really, really important work that you're doing. And Rachel, it was looking at the connection between mental health and physical health. That's great. We're going to talk a lot about that today. Brilliant. So feel free to keep sharing. We've got one from Louise as well. Interested in nutrition for fitness. So I wanted to see how this also linked to mental health, which is just as important as physical health. Mm, nice. Very awesome. good. Well, shall we start with a little intro, Thomas? Yes, sounds good. Who do you, would you like to go first, or should I? I'm happy either way. <laughs> you choose. Ladies first, go ahead. Gentlemen, you are. Thank you so much. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Tanya Diggory. I'm the founder and director of a UK-based global training organisation called Karma, and we empower entrepreneurs, freelancers, and business teams to nurture good mental health and well-being. So we predominantly do this through workplace training courses, events like this, and uh, and one-to-one -one sessions and webinars. Um, so my journey started off, I mean, from quite a personal perspective into how I launched Karma, and Thomas and I are both going to share our personal journeys today together. So I'll go into that in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, but it's led me to also write, so I'm an author, I'm also a mental health and wellbeing speaker, so as well as running my business and working with wonderful trainers and a team um, that are all passionate about nurturing good mental health and, and strengthening your resilience. Um, I'm really passionate about just promoting this message far and wide as a speaker and a writer too. So that's a little bit about me. Over to you, Tom. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tanya. That was uh, fantastic. Yes. So um, my name is Thomas Howe robson Canu. Um, most people will probably know me as the uh, professional athlete. Uh, I play uh, internationally for Wales uh, football uh, national team, as well as uh, in the Premier League for West Bromwich Albion, um, so uh, uh, what people would call an elite sportsman, um, so it, my journey to there has been one which has been, you know, um, full of ups and downs, uh, the, the downs have been around, you know, injury, um, physical, uh, you know, conditioning, uh, which then has ultimately led, uh, to, you know, to really understanding the power of the mind and the impact that, you know, the, your approach uh, to uh, your overall well, wellness and, and health uh, has uh, on your overall performance uh, but also more importantly in your overall well-being and ultimately then in your life um, alongside being a professional athlete um, an international footballer I'm also the founder of the Turmeric Co uh, which is a uh, natural health uh, functional uh, shot drinks brand uh, which delivers uh, products to customers all over the UK um, uh, which ultimately offer a functional benefit as opposed to uh, you know, the, the traditional uh, products which are sort of, you know, saturated in the market, uh, which consist of, you know, high sugars, uh, you know, uh, poor uh, blends, poor quality ingredients. And um, so we're really changing a lot of people's lives through uh, the range. But the story of the range is, uh, you know, one which I'm sure we'll cover on the, the show today, um, but came through uh, the adversity which I faced um, in terms of my health and wellness and ultimately uh, my my uh, approach to turning towards nutrition to support that so that is uh, my introduction also wonderful thank you so much for sharing that thomas very inspiring and uh craig has also just written during lockdown he found it definitely no it was noticeable how diet and exercise affected his mood and mindset so certainly something that we will be talking about today and and covering in more detail so this is just such an important topic, isn't it? I mean, Thomas and I first um, connected together earlier this year when um, we were fortunate to have Thomas uh, feature on our podcast for our final episode and uh, to talk about determination and, and a positive mindset and what that means for your overall health, really, and well-being. And um, I was really struck by Thomas's personal story um, and his openness to looking at looking after your overall whole health um which you don't always hear about you know and so i thought that was really inspiring and so that kind of led us to look at you know the, the synergy that was really between our two brands and so this event and this campaign around this there is only one you was born so we're both very passionate about this link between our mental physical 
nutritional health, how it how it supports our overall health and well-being and what we can all do to um, to look after ourselves. So great to be here with you today, Thomas, to, to discuss further. Yeah, precisely. And, and as you said, I think one thing that we've both seen throughout our journeys is that the impact that you know, health and nutrition has on, uh, you know, the, the, the wellness and the, 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 the mental state of, of people, you know, our close ones, our loved ones, you know, family, friends, um, you know, people in, you know, who are, whether it's uh, achieving, you know, aspiring to be a professional athlete or, you know, working on a, you know, nine to five role, which, you know, so many people do and enjoy and the impact that that has on, you know, one's overall health is, is, is really, uh, you know, uh, uh, powerful. And I think, uh, from our perspective, you know, we, we've learned some really, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't call them tricks, but some, you know, unique approaches to actually dealing um, with, uh, you know, whether it be adversity or whether it be, uh, you know, goal setting, but ultimately uh, the, the, these, uh, these experiences are ones that we obviously are looking forward to sharing now and, and we feel will, you know, really offer um, some really good insight and hopefully um, uh, some inspiration too. Yeah, absolutely. So um, at the end, we will host a Q&A. So please do, you know, make note of any questions that you have as we go through. We're sort of hosting this like a, in conversation with style, like we're just going to have an open, natural discussion between us on some really key points that we sort of had a chat about beforehand um, in preparation for this event and sort of where we're covering areas around you know, we're going to share our personal stories with you, how, how we actually came to this stage in our lives, like what was the, the turning point that made us realise the importance of mental, physical, nutritional health. And um, we'll talk a bit about balance as well and what finding balance means, and um, especially in our, our modern day lives now. And then we will we'll go into more detail around looking at well-being and mental health, looking at the nutritional impact um, on mental health and our physical state as well. And, and we'll share some tips with you um, because this event is also in alignment with National Nutrition Month, which was in March and National Stress Awareness Month, which is April. So Thomas is gonna be sharing some tips around personalizing your plates and I'll share some tips around the theme of connectivity, certainty and control to support your mental health as well. So that's sort of overview of uh, what to expect today. Um, Thomas, since you so kindly asked me to go first at the beginning, would you like to go first in terms of sharing your personal story and kind of what led you on this journey to that link between the value of nutrition and, and your physical and mental health? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, and the, the key point for that is obviously finding balance. You know, how, how did I how did I really find that balance? And I think for me, it was... Um, you know, firstly, understanding the importance of nutrition. So uh, we're, we're taught, um, you know, uh, or, or should I say, you know, we're, we're not necessarily taught the importance or, and the significance that nutrition plays in our in our lives. So an example of that is, um, you know, in a lot of uh, kids sports, the main sponsor will tend to be either uh, McDonald's or Coca-Cola. So, you know, bearing in mind, uh, you know, what, what, for example, I would I you know know personally firsthand and also through the research that, that I've had to do subsequently, um, the impact of a high sugar drink and a fast food um, on a young individual's you know, a young human being's diet is incredibly powerful and uh, is very detrimental if it becomes a staple part of their diet. So, taking that into account and then looking at um, you know the the our society in general we've never had more disease in the world that we do have today with all of you know everything that we've learned around you know technology you know the impact of various compounds you know we we, uh, uh, we still uh, for some reason have a massive amount of disease in our society and what that is telling us is if you look at the consumption uh, patterns the diets of the majority of people around the world they are very much nutrient deficient and they're also not um, consuming key compounds and key ingredients which would ultimately elevate their overall health but ultimately really have a significant impact on their mental state how they feel um, and ultimately their performance in whatever it is that they're doing you know whether that's getting out of bed and reading books you know you're you're going to do that better if you feel good about yourself so i think um the, going back to the point that where, how did I you know come across this uh, you know find this 
balance and understanding was that I was obviously forced into really understanding the power of natural nutrition. And the reason why, because my body began having adverse effects to what people would call, you know, standard medication. So various anti-inflammatories and painkillers I was prescribed as a teenager to help me recover from um, surgeries that I had as a 16 and 17 year old. And my body rejected them. Um, you know, thankfully enough that they rejected them because, you know, at the time it was very severe, you know, I'd pass blood in my urine, you know, I'd have severe nausea, um, you know, I'd have insomnia where I couldn't sleep and um, really traumatic as a young individual. So I, myself and my father, we basically went on a mission to find natural remedies, which could um, ultimately offer the same properties that I was looking for in these prescription drugs. So, you know, anti-inflammatory um, properties, you know, pain relief properties, um, uh, you know, uh, reduction in swelling. Um, so all of these um, uh, uh, benefits from a prescription medication, we had to look at natural options that gave us that. And we did, and we found these ingredients and they consist of things such as, you know, pineapple, pomegranate, watermelon, you know, ginger, and then subsequently turmeric. But these ingredients at the time, they weren't readily available and particularly not in a combined format. So we went on a journey of you know, several weeks looking into how we could blend these ingredients in, its, in their rawest form for me to consume them as a relatively fussy teenager. And so we did that and my father eventually developed a blend, which is obviously what, we, you know, what we, we've made available through the Turmeric Co now, but this brand blend was you know, like a golden elixir at the time. It was nothing that I'd ever experienced before. And the first time I had the shot, it was so potent and powerful that it really, you know, knocked my socks off. And I was like, wow, you know, I was grown up on a diet consisting of, you know, pasta, chicken and baked beans, you know, as a young, that's what young athletes, you know, used to eat a decade ago. And so, um, yeah, so subsequently coming across this and using this blend within a number of weeks, it completely changed how I felt, how my body reacted to training. Um, and ultimately it changed my life. And that pushed me on a journey of really understanding how nutrition plays an impact on your life and uh, I was on one extreme you know looking to become an you know a, an elite athlete but uh, at the same time now this same range you know we're able to offer people in all different walks of life and we're you know changing the the lives for the better um, of people who you know suffer from arthritis you know suffer from inflammation you know suffer from lack of energy and ultimately that's all down to nutrition and that made me really understand the importance of having that balanced diet and not being on one side, you know, too fast food processed, um, but then on the other side, you know, maybe not getting enough of those nutrients, uh, those key ingredients that, that your body needs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. So, um, yeah, so a really powerful, you know, powerful journey and um, one that I'm really grateful for. And, um, but, but from your perspective, you know, how, how did, uh, you know, yourself, how did you find, you know, find a balance? Like, how did you, you know, sort of uh, experience that and, and, and how would you define that now in your in your life? Mm. Well, thank you so much as well for sharing that. I mean, I, I found that so powerful when you shared, you know, um, parts of that in our interview earlier this year as well. And um, just that, I think that that wider comment that you also made about what has been promoted, you know, especially within the sports sphere around um, sugary drinks or, you know, kind of what, what food um, to eat and, and what we need to be paying attention to. Um, so from my perspective, so coming from the sort of within the mental health space, so I've I set up three different businesses before the age of 30 and um, my second business, I was running two concurrently and um, I loved what I did. And I think that this is um, where it can be a bit of a pitfall for entrepreneurs. I don't know if you found this, Thomas, too, that sort of, you know, how much you're passionate about what you do can almost overtake and consume your life if you're not careful. Um, so I was, you know, running two businesses. It was really full on. One of them was events based as well in international events. And um, it got to a point where I was working myself to the bone, the, the classic example of, you know, working way too many hours, um, not taking care of myself, you know, going through high periods of stress and just not listening to those signals that my body was really sending me, but um, I just didn't really pay attention. And then it got to a point where I sort of delivered the first round of um, our events and then I, I just completely burnt out and I had no kind of 
language or terminology for this at the time because I just knew I felt completely not myself and I had to take time out of work I was almost forced to you know my body put me in that position and um, I'd even had this physical injury at the time which really uh, you know was quite telling that this physical injury got worse and worse because I wasn't taking care of it and it was having a trigger impact on my mental health as well and so I ended up actually going through a, a period of you know, mild depression, I went through a period of severe anxiety. And I would say anxiety was the one thing that I grappled with the most um, in that first year of, of really um, just go pushing myself way to limit. Um, and I actually struggled with panic attacks for a while. And at the time I couldn't, like I said, I didn't really name what I was going through. I didn't really know that's what I was going through. Um, we're talking, you know, seven, eight years ago now, um, where mental health, let's be honest, has come a very long way in that time. And so people weren't really talking about it as much back then. Um, so it really set me off on this trajectory of exploring what, what actually is the, the defining point? What, is, what are the limits that we experience when we go through high stress? When does it become burnout? What does that really mean? What's the difference between the two? And um, and what does looking after your mental health ultimately mean? So, you know, in terms of balance, I had a severe lack of balance during that time. And it really was a massive wake up call to look at, you know, how I was living my life, how I was managing my business at the time. Was it really worth how hard I was working myself? And there's, there's working hard and then there's working smart, right? With your time. So I was just working to the bone and, and I hadn't realized it until my body was like, and stop, you can't go any further. Um, so I, you know, on the outside, I looked well and okay to everyone. And that's what really hit me as well. I was like, I'm really struggling on the inside. And I even had to take time out and not many people really knew that I was going through that. So I started having people come to me to, uh, for mentoring and um, they were creatives, um, you know, who were, um, struggling with depression, having panic attacks, having PTSD, but they weren't talking about it. And it was this idea of, okay, I didn't really talk about it openly. These people aren't talking about it. And then I had this light bulb moment, um, which sort of set me on this path really of setting up karma. Um, I felt there needed to be this space in the business world, especially where there needed to be this platform to say, do you know what, it's okay if you're struggling because it's a human experience and this is what you can do to help yourself. So that idea of the prevention aspect, you know, prevent things from escalating before it gets to that point where you're like, oh, I can't cope anymore. And then we have, you know, serious potential health issues on our hands. So what I found during that whole experience, um, and it was really telling because I now don't have panic attacks, thank goodness. But what I would say is I manage my mental health in a way that if I ever felt a panic attack coming on, I know how to manage it. Or if I'm feeling particularly anxious, I can spot the signs early on because I've done a lot of self-work in understanding myself and what my triggers are and my limits are. So um, I found that implementing healthy boundaries um, was absolutely one of the key cornerstones to nurturing a sense of balance in my life and really just connecting to what's most meaningful in my life because um, I, I'd love to hear your perspective on this too but I, I don't think that balance is just in in one area of our life and actually if we put too much focus on just one part you know whether that is just work or just you know um, certain aspects of our personal life or just a passion project or a charitable cause there's this imbalance there and actually as human beings you know we thrive on connecting with other people we thrive on variety we thrive on um you know having a vision and, and following it so it's about finding those boundaries that can ensure that you're nurturing all those different aspects of your life and actually feeling at your best so you're in a better position to be able to give yourself to your work to the people in your life to all the causes that mean something to you mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's no, that's that that's uh, that's incredible. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. But I think um, it's amazing, isn't it? Because it's the the model of understanding. You know, it's almost like we're we're, we're taught when we're growing up, and everything around us, you know, sort of indicates to us that we should, you know, um, what we what we experience ultimately has a direct impact on how we feel. And I think like. For us, everything that I've learned around, you know, whether it's playing at the highest level of sport, you know, um, developing, you know, a, a, a startup business from scratch and, you know, looking to take it sort of, you know, multinational or whether it's, you know, um, you know, having a family life and, you know, grow, nurturing, a, you know, a young family with kids. I think it's one thing that I've learned, which is, you know, which supports the, um, you know, what we're discussing in terms of balance is really firstly identifying, you know, what what we think like how we think and what we think about and actually 
beginning to understand what we think about and then the 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 emotion that that begins to create with us because you know we're 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 very early on you know it's uh, I don't know whether what what it is but we're almost taught whatever we experience we have to have an emotion for it so you know if the rain if it's raining outside then it makes us depressed if it's sunny outside it makes us happy everyone's feeling great today you know but at the same time if we if we go for a job application and uh, for an interview and we don't get it we're disappointed and and obviously that's it's almost like of course it's common it's almost like common sense to think that way but actually what you're doing you're sort of losing your own power in a sense because fundamentally what something which i've learned is that you can control the emotions that you feel regardless of what happens to you externally mm -hmm. and i think that's the the big point that i have around balance is you can you can you know what you want to try and get to it or aim for a place is where you control your own emotional state um, and there's a lot of research in this uh, in this area you know um, uh, ongoing uh, you know uh, it's called sort of epigenetics and the impact that your emotional state um, and your mood then has on not only how you feel but on the the structure of your dna you know so when you're stressed and that's why often when you're stressed you become more stressed and you can become more stressed and that's why you know you get locked into a di uh, you know a downward funnel but if you can actually take a step back and at all times and again this goes for me as a sort of an, an athlete you never something which we were told growing up which only really makes sense you know now is never get too high on the highs and never get too low on the lows mm -hmm. and really what that mean what that is saying is is like you know don't let your environment dictate how you feel. You know, ultimately it's, it's saying the same thing. And the power behind that is that allows you then to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to feel really positive today. I'm, I'm not going to let, you know, the car cutting me up, you know, me missing the bus, you know, even if I'm late for work, you, you know, you live in a place where actually you say, well, I'm going to feel positive today and I'm going to have a positive reaction to, as many things as possible and when you begin to to live in that sort of place that's when you really you know you gain a level of power and you know a level direction of, of you know your, your life and I think for me balance that's how you know me balancing so many things of what I do and you know being in a positive state and you know a, a progressive state is that's a real core part of of, of it. Mm, absolutely. It's so, so well said, Thomas. Thank you for sharing that perspective. And also that idea I want to um, include within what you're saying is the idea of self-care. Um, it can, it's, it's used a lot, right? We hear about the term self-care. And this also, in my view, links to self-talk. You know, you're talking about positive mindset and positive self-talk and um, being aware of the stress response and how that can escalate and elevate. And it's a part of our human nature. So we need to be aware of that. But also, you know, self-care isn't just this sort of fluffy term of like, oh, you know, I'm just going to take a bit of time for myself. or I'm just going to have a nice hot bath, which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> you know, so it depends on your perspective. But whatever it is, whether it's going for a little walk or being in nature or taking a bit of time to meditate, yes these things help you but they are really incredibly powerful on a mental and a physiological emotional level but also I'd like to introduce the idea of just off the back what you said there about mindset making time for self-care helps you nurture a, a, a mindset that works for you rather than against you because when we're looking at the stress response there's a neurological shift there happening in the brain there's the part of the brain that links to stress its purpose, its core like survival mechanism is keep you safe and away from danger. And it's there all the time on the lookout detecting if there's a challenge, a threat, a danger. And it's actually, you might've heard that phrase, we're hardwired to focus on the negative. And it's, it's kind of linked to that, that the stress response is always trying to keep you safe. But the, the interesting thing is it can't differentiate between when you're actually in a, like a real life dangerous situation that's life-threatening. And if you've had like a frustrating email that's come through and you're like oh I wish I didn't have to deal with this today and oh their tone of voice and this is just really annoying the brain the stress response reacts the same no matter what situation it is it's like ah danger get in safety so you, I completely agree with you that that idea of taking a step back of consciously choosing to not just react in the moment because that's the easy thing to do that's our natural instinct to just react straight away and be like oh my gosh it's going to be an awful day and oh this happened and I can't believe this but actually it takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of rewiring the neural pathways in your brain to take a breath to take a step back and to choose how to respond and think about what self-talk would be helpful 
rather than a hindrance in that situation. And it takes practice, it takes time. So I just wanted to introduce that as an idea or concept of included within self-care. It's not just the physical things that you do, but it's also the mental state side of things. Yeah, no, definitely. And and leading into that mental health, you know, so managing mental health, you know, and that mind-body connection, you know, what, mm-hmm. what, what have you seen, you know, in yourself and sort of in people around you, you know, where where it's really, you know, you, you've seen it and, 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 you know, you've either identified with it or you've been able to take real strong learnings from that. Mm. Yeah, so the thing with mental health, um, the first thing I want to say is that I think we are still quite conditioned as a society to think of mental health as something that's gone wrong or a problem or an issue. And just as an opener, I wanted to introduce us to the idea of thinking about positive mental health and mental resilience and how we strengthen that. Um, Whether it's media stories, whether it's social conditioning, you know, cultural conditioning, whatever it is. For for centuries, you know, mental health was severely misunderstood. So I I think it's important for us all to think about mental health from that broad perspective of looking at it almost like a scale of fluctuation. Um, So, of course, you want to know what to do when things don't go well, you know, and when you're not feeling at your best and how can you support yourself or how can you help others when you notice they're struggling. But also the flip side of that is looking at how we nurturing good mental health. So that's just one thing I wanted to open with as a kind of perspective. But what I've seen, and from personal experience, is when when you are, say, struggling, um, it's not always easy to spot those signs. And, and I hear that a lot as well in my training sessions, people that I support, even people that I've worked with in the past, that it's, um, it's not always easy to spot that those signs of struggle because mental health is silent. It can almost, you know, when you're struggling with your mental health or experiencing mental health issues, it can almost creep up on you sometimes, you know, and, and it, you have to really put the time in to develop and cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness to understand what your kind of foundation level is, like what, what is a kind of sense of norm for you? What feels like, you know, contentment, like gratitude, a place of balance that we've been talking about before. What does that feel like so that you can understand when things don't feel so right, you know, and really listen and tuning into your body? But that takes practice. <laughs> Gosh, that took me time, you know, to get to that place where I really understood those signals that my body would tell me. Because mental health is is silent. You can't see it. It's intangible. You can't touch or feel it. You know. Whereas when you look at physical health, you see people's physical bodies. Um, but the issue with that is, like when I was talking about burnout and stress before. Um, it's, it's easy to convince yourself that you're fine and you can put a smile on your face and keep going. And that's difficult, different, sorry, to, to physical injury because when, when you literally break a bone and you have to rest, you have to take that time out, there's that tangible evidence you can see what's happening. Of course, there are invisible physical injuries as well, but just as an example, when in our mental health state, if we're struggling, And we just say to ourselves, I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Even though your body is sending you those little nuances, those little signals that you're not feeling at your best and that things are progressing. um, When you just keep telling yourself, I'll keep going. And then you're potentially reaching that state of burnout. What you're doing is almost like that. It's like the mental health equivalent of physically like breaking your leg and then just coming into work the next day and be like, oh, you know, I'm just here, I'm on crutches, I'm not gonna bother elevating my leg, I'm just gonna get on with my work. Like no one would think that that's appropriate to do (laughs) if someone had physically injured themselves. You take the time out, you rest, you recuperate until you're better. We need to get to this place of understanding mental health in that way too, just because we can't see it, we can't feel it. It doesn't mean that someone's not in a very, very difficult place if they're struggling and we all have our own um, limits, you know? So what would stress one person out won't necessarily stress another and vice versa so you have to trust your own feelings your own instincts when things don't feel right and and look at what your body's telling you because your body has a phenomenally smart way of signaling to you to pay attention when something doesn't feel right it's just like pay attention i'm tensing your muscles i'm giving your stomach ache i'm racing your heart i'm giving you headaches i'm making you sweat and it's like you feel these physical aches and pains and issues but then just like oh keep going you know, that, that's what I see a lot of where people try to just convince themselves rather than those taking the step back. And it takes a lot of courage to do that, can I just say, 
to take a step back, to recognize when you need to slow down. And there can be all these contributing factors of expectations and things that you think you should be doing. Um, but then you're going to end up being a detriment by burning yourself out, right? So, so if we look at it as like a state of fluctuation with our mental health, you know, one day we can feel different to the next. It's not linear. And, and the way that the brain is hardwired, remember that stress response is incredibly powerful. So it's, it's looking to keep you safe. So we need to take those little steps back once in a while and actually recognize what, you know, am I feeling at my usual foundation today at my baseline, you know, is this normal for me or am I feeling a bit all over the place? And it's choosing, like we were saying before about consciously focusing on the positives. And one thing I'll just sort of wrap up, you know, and the idea of training your brain over time and, and recognizing when you need to take a step, take a step back and breathe um, is looking at the, the fact that, you know, neuroscience research has developed so much over the years and, and incredibly strong advancements, especially in the last few decades. And there's that mind body connection you referenced before, Thomas, just to highlight to everyone. There's, there's been evidence to show in the field of neuroscience research that the mind essentially has the power to either heal or hinder the body. So essentially what we think affects how we feel physically, emotionally, and, and also how we therefore how we behave as well. So one thing really triggers on to the next. So just as when you're in a stress state, if you're feeling even more stressed and you've got constrictive breathing and you, know, you notice these physical responses going on in your body, it's the same thing if you imagine you're on a holiday or you've got a really you know, nice memory that you recall. What do you notice? <sighs> Your breathing relaxes. This is nice. Hmm. You know, everything opens up more and there's it's no coincidence. It's how the body's responding to your emotions, to your mental state. So being aware of that's really important that, you know, the state that you're in doesn't define who you are as a human being. It's what you're going through at that time in that moment. And it can fluctuate and you might go through periods of feeling really good and then you might have a really terrible time and then you might come back up again. And it's like with our physical health, really, there's that kind of fluctuation. So mm -hmm. That's what I was yeah. saying on that. I love your thoughts on that too, Thomas. That there's anything no, amazing. Happen. Yeah, thank you so much for that. That's uh, really insightful. And I think, um, you know, it's the it's the application of it. You know, where do you start? I think is the big sort of um, you know, barrier for a lot of people, which, you know, will, will be wanting to, you know, apply a level of balance and, you know, um, a connection, you know, between mind and body to, to their lives. But it's, you know, where do you start? And I think it's, you know, just focusing on the small details. So, you know, waking up in the morning and saying, okay, well, you know, for the first 30 minutes, I'm going to really feel positive about my life, about my day. And, you know, um, there's always people out there who are in a lot worse, you know, situations than you, you know, and it's um, as, as tough of it as, as it gets, you know, there, there's, um, you know, in the world that we live in, it's, it's a very, you know, it's, it can be a very, really difficult and, you know, harsh, uh, harsh world. So I think immediately waking up with a roof over your head, um, you know, w waking up with some form of warmth or, you know, some clothing on you is enough to show a level of gratitude. And that level of gratitude is ultimately what you want to, you know, focus in on and be grateful for and, and allow to really develop a positive uh, mindset and approach and emotion um, and just hold on to that for 30 minutes and then, you know, test it and be like, you know, then as you start your day, you know, the, the first bit of negative feedback that you receive whatever that may be you know it could even be that the light changing you know as you're driving from green to red just as you're about to pass it and oh that always happens to me you know and it's uh and 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 that that cycle is you know sort of as we said before that pre-built cycle of how we uh, allow our, emo our, our environment to impact us emotionally which ultimately then impacts the way we think and then the way we think impacts our emotions and then that creates our life so ultimately what we're saying is, is that if you control how you uh, react emotionally to everything in your life then you begin to control your life and that's how you can begin to you know create balance in it um but yeah i think from a you know from that mental and well-being perspective being in elite sports where there is you know such a high demand on and pressures you know on a daily basis whether that be for, for the manager for your peers your teammates uh, you know the fans you know, on TV, social media, all of these pressures, I think, um, have driven uh, severe depression in, in a lot of um, elite sports and particularly in football. And it's, it's something which is, you know, certainly underreported um, because for most players now, and, you know, I'm sort of 31, you know, I'm still playing at the, the highest level of, in my profession um, and, you know, feel great. But, you know, I, I've, I've had teammates and I have teammates who they know if they were feeling, 
down or they were feeling insecure um, and they went to you know um, to, to their manager across every single team and every single club that they would be concerned that their manager might think they're weak or they're you know um, you know not wor- you know worried or you know not not ready for the game on the weekend and so um, you know uh, mental men- mental illness or mel- mental you know uh, weaknesses as they may be seen it, it's a it's an area which is so untapped and and requires real consideration and um, you know appropriate attention because mm-hmm. um, you know it 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 it's negatively impacting a lot of people and I think when it can be when people can begin to talk openly and f- freely about it without any consequence I think only then will everyone realize how big an impact it's been playing on so many different people's lives and um, and so. So yeah, so from from my perspective, uh, as I said, I think um, I've really sort of, um, you know, really owned and championed that message of really controlling your emotions and Mm -hmm. controlling, you know, because not not controlling, but thinking about, you know, so I'll I'll think deeply about how I feel, you know, how a certain situation makes me feel. And that might be, you know, losing on the weekend and how, you know, losing a football match and, you know, but, but a football match where people's jobs are on the line, you know, uh, winning and losing is, you know, the difference between a contract and a not, not a contract. So, you know, how does that make me feel? And then realizing why that may make me feel a certain way. And then actually saying, well, look, me feeling that way, isn't going to have a difference on that actual situation. So right now, you know, I'm going to look at, uh, you know, the positives that I have in my life and, you know, the things that I can be grateful about. And ultimately that's how you, over time gradually uh, generate and increase more of those positive um, experiences events um, uh, in your life which uh, you know which obviously everyone wants to feel you know everyone wants to feel good and uh, you know feel loved and but ultimately you have to first give love you have to first you know give good you know so mm-hmm. it's like you know really really uh, uh, owning that Absolutely, hundred percent. Thank you so much for sharing that, Thomas. So, so in in the spirit of looking at how, so we've talked a lot about like the mental physical link and aspects. So, with the nutritional value, I'd love to hear more of your perspective on that, and um, you know how it can impact our mental state, our physical health. I know you've done a lot of research in this area, and. Can I just say your shots are great, by the way, <laughs> I've tried them and uh, I love that it's a family recipe um, with what you've developed together. You've got that sort of nice, um, you know, story behind what you do. But, you know, whatever led you to that point, but also in general, just, you know, with your experience of finding that that link between, you know, functional nutrition, how that can improve your mental and physical health. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's a, it's a family recipe, but it's also a family run business and, you know, something we're very proud of, you know, they're setting it up in the UK and um, you know, everything we've achieved, we're now producing, you know, hundreds of thousands of these small shop bottles on a, you know, a, a monthly basis, which is a phenomenal achievement. Um, but again, is testament to uh, the shift in people's mentality, because now people are looking for, you um, you know, uh, new ingredients and uh, products which actually do offer some form of function. And that function isn't, okay, this is a medicine and it's going to cure me. It's actually, well, no, there's compounds in here which, uh, you know, do support various functions within the human body, which if I wasn't consuming this, then that specific function may not be, uh, you know, uh, uh, may not be uh, correctly serviced in my body, you know, or, co- or correctly nourished in my body. So, um so that that whole approach is something which you know we we really champion at that the turmeric co and um it's led us to deliver a range of products which as i said you know are helping tens of thousands of people on a daily basis uh, with their overall health and that le- you know that comes from you know whether it's um you know supporting them with energy you know because they're they may be fatigued quite quite quickly or you know have a low low energy levels or whether it's you know, helping uh, reduce any pain or, or, or pain thresholds or uh, information that they have in their body or whether they've had, uh, you know, a recent injury and they're looking for natural nutrition to, to help recover from that. But the biggest thing what we've seen is that we know that nutritionally, the impact of the food that you eat is paramount to your physical state and your physical performance. So we know that because, uh, you know, being an athlete, if I eat junk food for a week and play on the weekend, or if I uh, eat, you know, really balanced food in, in with high nutrients and also with some functional ingredients, 
I'm going to feel very different uh, on the weekend as well. But not only feel, my physical performance can be monitored and determine that there is an improvement in physical performance, okay? So we know that what you put into your body does have a direct correlation. But actually what we're seeing now with, with our, um, with, for example, with our, our range, the Termico, is actually we're helping support a lifestyle shift and generate new positive forming habits by taking, you know, at the start of your day, a turmeric shot, because not only from a nutritional perspective, is it having a really positive impact on their overall health, you know, overall well-being, but actually it's helping condition that individual into saying, well, okay, well, if I'm going to have a turmeric shot in the morning, I'm probably not going to have you know, uh, loads of fast food over the over my lunch break, you know, loads of fast food in the evenings, you know, do a binge on, you know, some sweets and chocolates and candy, you know, every every night of the week. Um, so it's actually really helping that habit forming of leading towards a, uh, you know, a, a well balanced and, and natural life, um, you know, a well, ba well balanced uh, lifestyle, um, consuming, you know, natural nutrition. And so that's what we realized that that's actually what we, we want to drive more of because that's when over time we're going to really have a positive impact on society, which is our ultimate mission mm -hmm. and our ultimate goal. Because as I said, there's never been more disease in the world that there is today. You know, mm -hmm. and when you actually take the time to think about that, that's really scary. Mm -hmm. And that's like saying, you know, for all of the advancements that we have with you know, technology, surgeries, you know, uh, uh, exchange of information, um, you know, everything that we have that available to us, but we still have, there's, there's never been a higher rate of disease, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. And so what, what, when you begin to look at the patterns and the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the consumption uh, behaviors of society, you realize that we've gone really you know, we've, we've been directed towards a fast life, convenient, cheap, mm. uh, you know, food, um, uh, you know, a nutritional approach. And it, it's, it's one that isn't sustainable and actually reduces the level of health that you're going to experience in your life, which ultimately over time reduces the quality of your life you're going to experience. And so, it's um, so, you know, back, back, back to your question in terms of, you know, nutrition, the impact, impact it has on your mental state. It is the impact that it has on your physical condition, which ultimately then plays a significant uh, uh, role in terms of how you feel. Because, you know, everyone wants to lead a happy, healthy, active lifestyle. You know, I'm, you know even for me, I'm I could very, you know, very easily sit on my couch for, you know, 12 hours of the day, you know, if I had the opportunity, I would do that sometimes, <laughs> but, but I would, um, but I still want to feel good when I get off the couch, you know, so it's like, and I think really driving that um, focus and educating people on the uh, impact of nutrition is going to be a really key role. And it's something where I look back, you know, when I was educated in school, you know, I, I it's not, um, you don't really learn how to eat nutritiously. You know, you sort of mm -hmm. learn to semi understand what carbohydrates are, proteins are, fats are, but then you sort of learn very quickly that, oh, well, fats are bad, but carbs are good if you're active. But then it's like, well, sugar's a carb. So, okay, I'll just eat a pack of Haribo's or I'll just, <laughs> you know, drink a Lucozaid, uh, you know, two Lucozaids each, each, each day. And, well, actually, no, it's, um, you know, it's, it's about that natural, nutritious, balanced lifestyle. And I think, um, as I said, that's, uh, that's the mission we're on. And that's something which we're, we're really enjoying, you know, uh, supporting positive change with and through. Yeah, absolutely. And there's such a space for that now. I think, you know, a lot more people are becoming more health conscious and, you know, realizing the importance of looking after your, your overall health. And also, um, you know, interestingly, the, the Mental Health Foundation notes, um, you know, just like the heart and the stomach, the liver, the brain is an organ that requires all these different sort of vitamins, minerals, water, et cetera, to remain healthy. So um, that having that link there and, and that they support as well, 
having an integrated approach, you know, to looking after overall, overall health and well-being, it, it does have a direct impact, like you say, not only on your physical state, but the, you know, reducing that prevalence and the, the distress caused by mental health issues, because it all goes hand in hand when you think about it. We're, this is all one entity. When you look at your body, your mind, your brain, your body, it's all linked and interconnected. So it makes sense, um, you know, that, that, that they're all... Um, bounce off one another, so to speak. So there's certainly a place for what you're doing. And I, you know, I admire um, the journey that you've been on to get to where you are, Thomas. And um, do you have a few tips for our participants today then um, in terms of how, what would you do to sort of personalize your plate? If you're thinking of different, you know, compounds and different nutrients to include within a, a typical meal, what, what would you say is important? Yeah, I, th I think, um it's always it's, it's difficult to actually you know personalize your plate because there are so many options out there so I think it's more just you know which leads back to our original point around just having a balanced life uh, a balanced diet but one which you're aware of so I think the first step is actually beginning to think about what you're thinking about and how you're feeling mm -hmm. so you know I think most people would relate to when they have fast food you generally feel lethargic and tired an hour after like that's like I think people most people would acknowledge that but no one actually thinks about it you know and actually and really deeply thinks and says well wow like if I had that I'm going to feel lethargic and tired after mm -hmm. so if that is the case and I'm not one for saying you don't have fast food you you need to you want to experience everything and everything and there's a time and a place for everything out there in the world but it's about in balance and what do you uh, you know what do you have um, more of and what do you have less of mm -hmm. and so in that instance you want to be thinking well if that's how that makes me feel then actually I know that that's something I'm gonna have less of you know and then as you know but then it goes to uh, uh, you know, whether you have a real nutritious meal, when you have a really um, a nutritious breakfast, you know, or for example, you know, as we're saying, you know, the turmeric shots, when you have, um, you know, a meal that consists of real nutritious um, uh, options and compounds, then see how you feel an hour after, half an hour, an hour. And if you then feel, wow, yeah, I feel ready to start my day, day you know, and it's the start of the day, or you're like, you know, I feel ready to you know, start my day and it's the afternoon and then even better, you know. So I think it's that taking a step back and actually beginning to think about how you feel and what you're thinking about in relation to the action and to the, you know, to, to what's happening in your environment. And I think then the, the linking that to the personal personalization, like everyone is different. So everyone's body will always, although from a general rule, there are, you know, rules, you know, within universe that, okay, well, your body is going to process carbohydrates or fats or proteins in a specific way, but there are always, you know, complexities and, um, you know, anomalies to that. So I think it is also important that you then begin to personalize your, your own nutrition and your own, you know, what, what you intake based on how you feel and based on what your um, you know, how your body reacts and how your, um, you know, your mind begins to react to that. And I think that's, um, that's the key, key takeaway here. And, um, and as I said, I think the first part is actually just being open to that and, and being, you know, ready to take that first step. And, you know, one of my favorite sayings is, a, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a, a single step. And it's so true, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever it is, you, you know, your ambition, you know, your work, uh, you know, uh, uh, any relationship, it starts with a single step. So just take it. Um, and so, um, so yeah, that, that's what I would do. So in, in terms of that's my, you know, obviously, uh, uh, my tip in terms of, you know, personalizing your nutrition and, and really, um, you know, beginning to understand yourself from a nutritional um, uh, and mental perspective. But for you, you know, uh, in terms of achieving that greater sense of connectivity you know certainty and control what would be um, your, your top tip so thank you for sharing that and, and I really love that approach actually of thinking about how you'll feel once you've eaten the food on your plate that's, that's a really great takeaway thanks um, so I think based on what we've discussed today what I would suggest is a little writing exercise I mean, I love how you referenced earlier about the act of gratitude and, you know, 
referencing that in your daily life, of course, is really important. Um, but and you can utilize this as part of a, um, a way to, to recognize what's important to you. So when we look at that theme of connectivity, if you just grab a, grab a pen and paper and you write down what makes you feel most connected in your life, by that I mean most vibrant, um, you know, connected to something greater than yourself, um, something that, you know, connects you with people, with the purpose, with your drive, what helps you to feel connected. And this can also be activities. So if you enjoy being in nature and being outside and that helps you to be, feel connected as well, what are the small as well as the big acts um, that, that, that help you to feel connected? And that idea of certainty and control. As human beings, a big part of what can actually alleviate stress and anxiety is feeling a sense of control in your days. Now, you can't control everything that's gonna happen in your life and this past year is a big example of that, right? So you can't control all circumstances, but you can control your response to situations. So there might be certain things that you can physically take control of, and there might be certain things that you can't, yet you can, as Thomas and I, Thomas and I have talked about today, take a step back and look at how you want to respond, how you want to react to that, rather than just being reactionary and on, on the moment and on the pulse. Um, which may not be to to the best, um, you know, might be to a detriment. So with that list as well, uh, once you've written down what, what helps you to feel most connected in life, what are the small and the big activities, if you're feeling, you know, stressed at the moment, you feel like you want a bit more control in your life, you want to feel a little bit more certain in your days, um, write down what it is that's actually bothering you at the moment. Um, and then once you've had that list in front of you, actually that act of writing down can create a lot more crystal clear clarity in a way um, with having it on paper. And it's not just buzzing around your head anymore, you've got it in front of you. But the idea is that you then go through that list and you identify with each item, what's in my control and what's out of my control. And there's something about actually having an element of acceptance around the things that aren't actually in your control um, and understanding, okay, how do I wanna choose to respond to it? How do I wanna choose to be with this? And um, what else can I do or who can help me? And, and you just start to piece together things that you realize actually there might be some items that are in your control and you can do something about it and change it for the better for you. And other things you might just have to um, work with a level of acceptance, but also look at how else you want to emotionally respond to it. And so by building in that kind of sense of feeling a little bit more in control in your day, that can be an exercise that you could come back to every week if you wanted. So just writing down what's on your mind. It might not even have to be anything that's really bothering you in a big way, or it might be just helpful to, to let it out. But just identify like what helps me feel connected, what's bothering me, but what, what is actually in my control to do and what's maybe not in my control, but how, how do I want to respond to it? And with the connectivity piece, it's looking at where you can find little points in the day that you can make time for what makes you feel connected. So you don't just feel like you're getting up and you're being led by the outside world in your day because you fully have control of how you want to spend your day. Um, you know, that when we're struggling with our mental health or we're feeling in a stressed out place, it can be easy to lose sight of the fact that we have choice, but it's also really important to remember that we always have a choice. And you can do that just as an exercise or an example by counting all the choices that you've done today from the really small things like choosing to get up in the morning and getting on with your day to the bigger decisions you may have made. But whether we're consciously or unconsciously aware of it, we're always making micro to big decisions all the time. So there's nothing, nothing different in that sense. If you're not feeling in a great place or you feel like you want a bit more control, you can take back that control by exploring choice. So that's, that's one thing I would say um, for that theme of connectivity and feeling a bit more certain and in control of your days. But um, one thing I also wanted to just wrap up on before we have a few minutes for Q&A. So feel free, if you've got any Q&A, any, any sort of questions I mean in your mind, please feel free to start writing them down. But I want to also raise the point that we've talked a lot about balance today, Thomas. But in the last year, we've all felt some sense of loss, whether that's sort of a small sense of loss or a bigger sense of loss, like, you know, whether it's physical loss of work or loss of earnings or loss of, you know, in some cases bereavement or people. So there's been a lot going on this last year that's been really difficult for us. And we felt perhaps not so in control a lot of the time. So this is an example of acceptance, you know, like we, we didn't have much control over the last year in some areas of our lives, but we have learned, you know, other elements that have come from that, that we've learned to perhaps appreciate and reflect about more and maybe introspect that bit more and what's really important. So I want to introduce also this idea that, you know, balance might look a little bit more different for you now. And it could be in a good way, like if you've been working from home or, for example, 
is there something more about that that you want to keep introducing into your life and keep you know maintaining and nurturing um is have you made more time for cooking for meal planning you know for nutritious food um have you made a bit more time for yourself you know during the day at work to go out and actually enjoy being outside that you didn't do before so it's that idea that thomas mentioned earlier around practicing gratitude and noting things but recognizing that perhaps you know balance might look a little bit different to us at the moment or moving forward because we have been through a massive imbalance perhaps in the last year so I, I just wanted to like leave you with that message as well that you know if it looks different then you know focus on what actually you want to carry forward from what you've learned over this last year so yeah great amazing sounds good thank you so much for sharing and that was uh, awesome i think uh, hopefully the, uh, the the viewers i'm sure will uh, will have some really good takeaways from that um and yeah it's uh, it's good i think uh, few minutes left i've got a hard stop at six so um let's uh, if there's any q and a's let's get through them as quickly as possible possible so craig said that he liked your don't let your environment dictate how you feel statement and he said that's so important and nice. Hilla, thank you very much. Lots of great advice. You're very welcome. So pleased that you've enjoyed. Um, yeah, any questions, guys, please feel, do feel free to add in the comments. Um, Thomas, is there anything that you want to share before you leave? Um, other ways that people can stay connected with you and what you're doing? Yeah, so uh, you can find me and, and, and the business at theturmeric.co. Uh, we're also on um, Instagram uh, and our website. Um, so we're on all of the social channels. You know, we've got, uh, you know, we're building really great communities who are forward thinking around health and nutrition. And uh, we're always welcome to, you know, um, introducing it to new people and educating new people and you know, allowing it to be a positive environment, um, which, uh, you know, obviously has a, has a very powerful message at the end of it. So, um, yeah, and my own social handles are obviously Robson Canu, um, uh, also on Instagram and, and Twitter. But a lot of my sort of exposure and the work that I do is, is very much through, through the brand. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really using it as a, as a, a platform to, 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 to shout about some really strong messages that I'm passionate, passionate in. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. Great. Um, Fantastic. So, um, and for, for anything else related to Karma as well, we've got a really wonderful campaign called the Reignite Project, which you can sign up to for free. And it's you receive a 10 week burnout prevention e course, giving you lots of different strategies to help prevent burnout from being a feature in your life and to help you build and strengthen mental resilience. So, you can find out more information on thisiskarma.com forward slash reignite and find out more about what we offer on our website as well. And we're on social at This Is Karma. And it'd be lovely to stay connected with you all. And we really appreciate your time in joining joining us today so thank you very much awesome all great. right have a great all rest right. of the evening thomas thanks take care thank yeah you. thank you very much a pleasure it was great speaking and uh yeah we'll, we'll look forward to catching up with you soon absolutely thanks so much take right. good care of yourself take care you too bye, bye. bye.